What's up, everybody? Ryan Thomas here, live on the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Bada bing, bada boom, making things happen. Very pleased to post what I was able to post today. In regards to the future of the show, things have, have never been better. Um, so many opportunities have been thrown my way because of this podcast. I'm so thankful for everybody that has tuned in the last almost three years. And realistically, when I look back uh, three years ago, I think you know January 2016, right before Super Bowl 50, which featured the Panthers and the Broncos, I thought, you know, I want to start a podcast. I want to start something that is a, a mouthpiece for myself that allows people to listen to my thoughts and, and listen to how I think and listen to, uh, truthfully, the, the Ryan Thomas take, the Thomas take. And it's been very fun, to say the least. Uh, fun does not even quantify how amazing this experience has been for me to, to be able to just put my thoughts out there and have people listen to them. It's been really great. The interaction, the, the people I've met because of this, people I've had the opportunity to work with because of this, and the other shows I've been on because of this, it's just its fascinating, really. It shows the day and age that we live in, and I wouldn't want it any other way, really. I love the the time that we're in right now. I really do. So... Thank you to everybody that has tuned in these last couple years. I really want to throw that out there to start the show today. Wrapped up part one of the show. Discuss the James Conner, Le'Veon Bell dilemma that hundreds of thousands and millions and billions of fantasy owners are suffering from. Some of them are not. Some of them were smart enough to draft James Conner if they drafted Le'Veon Bell. But some of them weren't that smart. Some of them weren't that lucky to be able to pull that off. Don't have the exact percentages. Don't have the exact numbers. But we know that that's the reality of it. So, that being said, we're shifting gears here, talking about an MMA topic that I've been dying to dive into since I had really heard the news yesterday. Daniel Cormier was on my man Ariel Helwani's MMA show. And he talked about Right out of the gate, Ariel, you know, has these guests on. He's got the top of the top, you know, guests on his MMA show. The best of the best. It's probably the best MMA Ariel Hawani show that, that he's ever done in terms of his star power, the guests that he has. I mean, every week is just fascinating. He was on the MMA Hour for about 10 years, it felt like. It, the, the guests were great. But this week in particular is just a fascinating week. It's the biggest week in MMA history, really, leading up to a fight. He's got Connor on. He's got DC on. He's got Rampage. He's got Bellator guys on. It, it was awesome. I enjoyed it. Haven't even finished most of it yet, but did listen to the Daniel Cormier interview. And... It was shocking. Ariel calls him up. DC says, well, you know, Ariel introduces him as the current reigning, defending light heavyweight and heavyweight champ, the champ champ at light heavyweight and heavyweight. And, and Daniel Cormier says something to the tune of, well, you, you might not be able to introduce me as that for long. And Ariel Hawani is like, tell us what you're hearing. And, and Daniel Cormier, I'm paraphrasing here, says that the UFC initially wanted to put the 205 pound belt on the line at UFC 232 between Alexander Gustafson and Yoel Romero. But with Yoel Romero's injury, um, Yoel Romero was out. And then came the really somewhat disturbing news of John Jones' sentence being a 15-month retroactive sentence from his first positive test. He tested positive back in July of... 2017 and his suspension will run out October 28th, uh, July 28th, 2017. His suspension will, will run out October 28th of 2018. So it's a 15-month suspension from the date in which Jones tested positive. So he will be eligible to come back as of October 28th and the UFC has shifted gears with those results, with that news, to say, well, hey, 
Alexander Gustafson is going to be ready to fight December 29th at the UFC 232 card. He's going to be ready. John Jones is going to be active as of October 28th. That gives him enough time to get in fight shape, gives him enough time to put a camp together. Two months is nothing. Two months is, is more than enough time, eight to ten weeks, for him to put a camp together. October, November, December. So, you know, John Jones is obviously training every day. He can still train. He, he just can't fight. So John Jones has been training, but to get in true fight shape, true fight camp, ability, mode, whatever you want to call it, that's that, that suffices. That's okay. So John Jones, Alexander Gustafson, is now being rumored as the main event for UFC 232 for, yes, the light heavyweight title. And I have a problem with that. But before I you know, dive into why I have a problem with it, the reason why it is fair I'll talk to you about that. The reason why I think it is fair is because Alexander Gustafson deserves to fight for the title. For Pete's sake, he deserves to fight for the title. I don't care if he's been out X amount of months, X amount of days, X amount of years. The one guy that gave John Jones trouble was Alexander Gustafson. The one guy that gave Daniel Cormier trouble outside of John Jones is, yep, you guessed it, Alexander Gustafson. So the, the, the hierarchy of the division has been Jones... DC and Gustafson, Anthony Johnson mixed in there, but Gustafson is is a worthy opponent. And oddly enough, when you put Gustafson and Anthony Johnson against the cage, against each other in the cage, Anthony Johnson ran right through him. It was the one guy he he just easily went through like a knife through butter. But DC and Jones could not crack the code. DC got through a very close decision. Jones got through a very close decision. Neither guy could finish Gustafson. John Jones has finished everyone, including Cormier, and Cormier finished Stipe Miocic for the world heavyweight title. They couldn't finish Gustafson. Anthony Rumble Johnson, with his fists of death, did. So there's a lot of intrigue there. Alexander Gustafson deserves to be the number one contender of the division. He deserves that title shot. But John Jones, does he deserve, keyword here, deserve that UFC light heavyweight title shot? Realistically, I don't even know what that word means in MMA anymore. Deserve. Did Michael Bisping deserve, or did, did, excuse me, did Dan Henderson deserve to fight Michael Bisping for the middleweight title? Did Conor McGregor deserve to fight for the lightweight title? Did George St. Pierre deserve to fight for the middleweight title? All of those circumstances have yeses and nos, in my opinion, littered within them. It's the UFC that picks the fights. It's the UFC that makes the that does the matchmaking. Whatever they say is what the people will get. And whether we think it's fair or not, John Jones will be fighting for the light heavyweight title that was taken from him, not once but twice, in a fight that is five years in the making, a rematch that is five years in the making, that millions and millions of fans want to see. But the fact that they are stripping Daniel Cormier, a guy that has had drug tests from USADA 70 times over and passed them all. Meanwhile, John Jones has had... Quite a few failed ones is mind blowing, is disturbing. And it further proves my narrative that I've been so poignantly talking about on this podcast for the last year now, year plus now, is that USADA, the United States Anti Doping Agency, really does not give a damn about fighters testing positive. Granted, they did suspend John Jones, but really the suspension was three weeks because he's been in limbo waiting for his suspension, and his suspension was literally three weeks. Four weeks. They laid on the suspension a month. He got a month 
for testing positive. Whether he, whether or not he knew what he was taking, whether or not it was a trace amount or whatever the hell the conspiracy theory that they want to throw out there, it was in his system. That's it. If you're the toughest drug anti-doping agency in the in the world, you guys say that you're the big bad crew that you will hammer down. You guys brought down Lance Armstrong. You guys brought down Barry Bonds. You guys brought down A-Rod. But you're not going to bring down John Jones. You're not going to throw the gauntlet at John Jones, who has had a litany of interesting circumstances come his way. Most of which were created by him. And then you're going to reward John Jones by not only giving him a title fight, but giving him a main event, a main event in the last card of 2018. He gets to bookend the year. He gets to close out the show. He is making the curtain call of 2018. This is the guy that we jerked the curtain for, as Chill Sonnen would say. I just don't get that. I don't get that. Did Yo Romero deserve the 205-pound title fight? For other reasons, Yo Romero didn't deserve it at all either. The problem is, Daniel Cormier could not fight Alexander Gustafson for that title and would not fight John Jones for that title due to the fact that he broke his hand fighting Stipe Miocic and they fear that the damage might even be to his wrist as well. So he's out. DC versus Brock is, is put on ice for the heavyweight title. It's a very tricky situation because you have your, your sitting champion that can't fight. He's hurt. He's not able to fight. But then you have the, the number one contender, Alexander Gustafson, waiting for an opponent. And the only opponent that you can really bring out and justify it is the guy that did, yes, have his title taken away for what people would say are silly matters. Yeah, I would agree with that. The, the matters were silly. The fact that he tested positive for a trace amount that realistically probably he did not know was in his system. I'm not saying John Jones is guilty this time, but just the fact that we had to go through all of this again and John Jones is responsible for that. It was his. It falls on him. Whether he meant to do it or not, it falls on him. USADA says they're big. USADA says they're bad. USADA says they're tough. Be big, be bad, be tough. They were not in this circumstance whatsoever. They were not. I was shocked to see 15 months. I thought he'd be out all of next year too. I really did. Maybe he'd be back. You know, the summer of 2019, not the winter of 2018. Something. But that's why we have stories like this. Will DC be stripped? Will DC no longer be a champ champ after every good thing that he's done for the company, after every way he's represented the company in a positive manner? DC will be stripped of that title. And I can't say it's wrong, but I also can't say it's right. This is a tough one. I can't say it's wrong, but I can't say it's right. I'm Ryan Thomas, everybody. That was the Thomas Take Sports Podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in. That was my take on the matters in the UFC light heavyweight division. The current light heavyweight champion, Daniel Cormier, might not be the light heavyweight champion much longer. Take care, everybody.